Hello everybody, welcome to my tutorial here on using starting images for stable diffusion. Now the first thing you want to do is to go ahead and run everything and I've got it all set up and ready to go now under animation settings we're just leaving none so I really haven't had to make any adjustments until we get down here to the prompts just run everything up above it first get ready. Now for my first prompt here I've got a demonish hellish dragon by Julie Bell art station fantasy art. So my idea here is I have a picture of my friend's chameleon Spitfire. She likes to post chameleons on her webpage and she breeds them and raises them. And we're gonna turn um, Spitfire into a demonish hellish dragon instead of the chameleon. So the first thing we wanna do is to get your starting image. And I've got mine here, start six. I've also cropped this a little bit. So I just have just the chameleon in there and then just kind of a black background. And it usually won't change solid backgrounds. Diffusion kind of needs noise to sort of make the image. So the black background should kind of stay. And then what you do is you right click on the image that you're gonna modify. And then you go down here to the init image and you want to paste the path to it. So I've got that start six path pasted here. Now the strength is what's gonna, one of the factors that's gonna determine how much it changes the image. So this is a real important one. The other one is also the scale. So the higher the scale is, the more it will change the image too. But right now we'll just leave it on seven. I believe that's the default. And the other factor is steps. So right now I'm just going to run this like this with the um, strength at one. And I'm going to go ahead and show you this should not change the image at all. So the higher the number is there for the strength, the less it will change the image on one. It's going to just basically keep the image exactly the same. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and there it is. So this is just my initial image. It hasn't changed at all. This is just the image that I cropped a little bit and threw in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other extreme, which is going to be just 0 0.1. So it's a percentage. So with 100 steps, it's based on your step. So I have 100 steps. So at 0.1, it's going to do 90 steps. So it's just going to keep the starting image for the first 10 steps. And then so it should change it quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, so see now it's doing 90 steps. So it's only keeping 10% of that starting image as the base. The rest, it's just gonna generate. So this is gonna kind of be almost like just the prompt all by itself without a starting image. Okay, and there is our image now. So you see we got kind of a drag in there. It does still keep the black. Like I said, it doesn't usually change those solid areas too much. So that's also a good way you can manipulate this. So now let's go ahead and turn this up to uh, 0.5. And this should kind of alter the image quite a bit, but still leave it sort of looking like the original image as well. And this is how you'll determine, you know, it depends on how much you want to change your image on where you set that. And I'll do a couple more tests here after this, and then we'll move on to another one. So this is our new image now. So it does look quite a bit different than the original, but it still kind of maintains the shape and everything. So this is a really good good um, way to just kind of modify existing image. Now, if we want it to stay more like it, we'll try 0.7 here. And this should keep it looking a little more like the original image. And there it is, yeah, and see, so, so now it still kind of has the colors of the original and things like that. Now, like I said too, another factor is the scale. So I'm gonna go ahead now and keep that at 0.7, but I'm gonna turn the scale up here to 50 just to show you. So now it should change this a bit more with that scale cranked up. So it's kind of it's kind of both factors, but the most important one is that strength right there, that percentage. So it's only going to render 30 frames to change it, but it had a little more strength there to change it, so it changes it a little more. So that does come into play as well. We'll just go ahead and put it at 10 here. And let's see if we can get something that looks kind of cool but different something a little more coherent here maybe so we'll put it at 0.6 and try it like this okay there we go so that's that's how you use a starting image so now let's go ahead and do another one here let's go ahead and i've got some pictures here too that i've downloaded from pexels and let's go ahead and try let's make a female alien let's go ahead and do that that's my start for here and I put a link down below as well to Pexels, which is a great site where you can get um, copyright free images for you to use. And I'm gonna change my prompt here. Okay, and this is an image I'm pretty familiar with. I've actually made some videos with this before and used it for starting image tutorials 
for disco diffusion as well. So I'm just going to use this prompt here, a uh, female alien by Rodney Matthews. And then I'll go ahead and copy my path over here. This time it is, I believe it is number four there. Yeah. Yep. So I already got that in there. Okay. Okay. And we've got a strength of 0.6. So this should change it quite a bit. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, and there we go. We can see that did change it quite a bit. And it changed that, you know, kind of um, cosplay costume out of paper mache into it makes it, her look like a real alien kind of creature now. So let's go ahead now and we'll put the strength down a bit too. This will change it even more. And then we'll do another one where we change it a bit less. So everything kind of comes into play to your prompt too. If it's a real powerful prompt, maybe that'll change it even more. So pretty much every starting your image, depending on what you're going for, you're going to have to adjust the settings a bit to get what you want out of it. So this one, you can see it changed it quite a bit, quite a bit, even more. And let's go ahead and do it now where it'll change it even less. We'll go ahead and just change it a little bit and just put it at 0.8. And you can see too where this skill will really help you with your video input because you're going to want to know how to change. It'll work the same way when it makes a video. And there it is. So now it's just changed a little bit. So let's go ahead and do one more here. And this time we're going to do a female. Let's do a female Android. I have one more here. Okay, so what I'm going to do the female Android out of is this one. Start five. So I'm just going to paste that here into the init image. And I'm going to change my prompt here. Okay, and I've been using pretty simple prompts just to kind of show you the process. I'll put a little bit more of a, a little more elaborate prompt in here. You can, you know, you can use whatever prompts you have. Um, with stable diffusion here, it really kind of looks, you don't really need complicated prompts here. But I've got, oops, there we go. Okay, so I've got a photograph of a sci-fi female android robot with biomechanical face implants, etc. And then we'll go ahead and run this. What's this at now? I believe it's a 0.8. We'll go ahead and turn that down a bit. 2.5. Now also, um, depending on your image, like this image has, it's more of a solid. So you might need to change the weight for each image. Just because your strength of 0.5 might have changed another image a lot. Maybe the next one you use, it's not going to change it quite as much. So with this one, I noticed that um, I had to turn this down a bit to get it to change it more. Yep, see, so there we go. And now let's go ahead and let me show you the original image here. I'll go ahead and do this at a one. And so this is just a real fun thing to experiment with. You know, you can take your profile picture and adjust it, make yourself an Android or an alien, whatever you want to do there. And then I'm going to show you one other good use for starting images as well, which is to kind of guide um, stable diffusion to make what you want there. Now it changed it quite a bit. You can see that. Okay, and another great use of this is just to kind of guide it towards the composition you want. So with this, I've just got a very simple and extremely simple green and blue background. And this is just going to put the sky and the horizon line where I want, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and put this image here in here. And you see, this is just a real plain background, just green and blue. So it's just going to keep the sky where the blue is and the landscape where the green is, basically. So let me go ahead and get my prompt in here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to using just a pretty simple prompt here for this next one. Okay, and I'm actually going to even just take this out. I'm just going to put a painting of a landscape. Okay, and that's a since that's such a simple picture, I'm going to go ahead and give it, we'll just start at 0.5. Let me show you. This will probably not change it too much because it is such a kind of a simple picture. So usually if you have something simple like this, you want to turn that down kind of low. Okay, and there we go. So you see we've got a painting now here, and it used my real simple just kind of green and blue background there as a guide. So we can control the composition there. We can control where the ground is, where the sky is, that kind of thing. But it does lack a bit of detail. Let's go ahead and turn that all the way down to 0.2 and do that again. So this is really great, especially like if you're doing a video game backdrop or something. You know, this is great to kind of just control where it where it places everything in your image. 
Okay, and there we go. And now you see there's a lot more detail, but we still have kind of got that composition in the same place. And taking this one step further, I've got just a slightly more detailed picture here. So my idea on this one was to generate uh, mountains and a lake and have, have them kind of placed where I have them in the image. So let's go ahead and run this one now. Okay, and there we go. And now we have some detail. It still kind of matches the composition I made. Not exactly 100%, but you kind of get the idea. You know, your prompts can have a lot of effect here too. So I hope this helps you with these starting images. This is a great way to kind of control. Now I did try the mask here as well. And it didn't really seem to work too good for me, so I might try to experiment with that again later. I'm not really sure. I tried with um, high numbers, low numbers, decimals, but it didn't really seem to take too much effect, so I'm not going to get into that today. But this is how you can use your starting images. So go make yourself robots, dragons, whatever you want to do. Thank you for watching. And this will transfer directly to the next tutorial I'm doing, which is going to be using starting video. And we can have Stable Diffusion transform our video. That is going to be really fun. So I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.